Hi, and welcome to Lesson 5, Part 3 of Pi Simple GUI, the complete course, and you must be diehards. Uh, today we're finishing up the input, single input elements, and those are checkboxes, radio buttons, and a slider. Uh, you know the drill for how to set all this stuff up. This is a persistent window, so look for output down here. Let's go through the parameters real quick on checkbox. Uh, default is whether or not it's checked when you start it. Uh, a little known secret uh, is if you set it to none, it will disable it. Um, that's sort of the old way of doing it. There's a disabled flag down here now that you can use. Size, auto size text, all of this stuff is really standard. The only thing we haven't seen yet is change submits. And this is a flag that you will see on a lot of different elements. Uh, what it does is it will cause an event to, to trigger when something changes. In this case, if the checkbox changes, you will get this key as the event com that comes back from the read. Uh, so let's see, disabled, default, all of that looks good. Here's what uh, things look like at the moment. I had set default to true. There's nothing else really here to talk about for those. Radio buttons, they're, the first thing is the text that you're going to put. The second thing is a group ID, and this is what is used to group together your radio buttons. So there could be another set here, and how would you know which belongs to which, because you can only choose one in a with radio buttons, and the way you find out is this group ID. Uh, and remember that this does not have to be text. Same thing with keys. You can be sneaky and put actual data in these things. Um, you can put a tuple in there to represent row column or something. Uh, radio buttons. Uh, default disabled, so almost all of them now have a disabled state. Uh, size is the characters columns, text, we've already talked about all of this. Uh, and there should be tooltips uh, on this form, but I'm not seeing them. It may have something to do with the recorder being going though. I think that had something to do with it. Okay, the last one is this here slider. Uh, range, um, it can be negative or positive. Default value says where to start it. So let's say we want to start on three this next time. We run it, it starts on three, negative 10 to positive 10. Um, resolution is how, mm, how often to put ticks, and I think that we can have half steps. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that was that was the tick interval that I just put down there. Resolution is uh, how much each each step of the slider goes. So right now I've set it to one. If this resolution were two, my guess is that uh, it will jump by twos. Zero, two, four, six. okay. Uh, if you put a tick interval down, then it will label it. This is a new thing that was just recently added. Uh, orientation, you can go horizontal or vertical. Uh, I've recently put much better sizing stuff for, for these default sizes. You notice that I didn't put any in in this case. And normally that would make a really weird, thin, slider very long so that got fixed uh, relief is uh, um, you can have different styles of these uh, there's the the way to test them is uh, it's sg dot relief and there and there's a whole a whole bunch of them um, flat is I think pretty flat uh, anyway let's try another one Let's try Groove, see if it actually changed something. It should be changing things. There we go. So it's around this outside, this Groove. It's pretty groovy. Uh, change Submits. Um, we didn't test that here, though. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So if we have, 
I'm going to turn on chain submit for here, and we're going to turn on chain submit uh, up here, which we already had, but we weren't. I wasn't watching it come out down here. I don't know if you were or not. Um, disabled. Da, da, da. We'll do disabled at the end, so you can see what they all look like. Okay, so let's look at this chain submit. Um, there should be a print that's going somewhere, and I just don't see where it is. Oh, there we go. There's the slider. So we're getting those, but it looks like for some reason, oh, checkbox is working. Radio buttons seem to have a problem. So that's a to-do, unless I didn't set it. No, there's chain submit. So that's a bug. Uh, and I think that's about it here. Um, let me show you what they look like disabled. You can start them disabled. They all have update. Uh, that's the other thing, actually. They all have uh, update methods to change them once the form, the window has been shown. Um, if you're a fan of updates, um, so you can see this is, it's not going to go anywhere. Neither will this. The checkbox uh, I didn't set. Uh, there we go. So I was saying on the updates, if you um, if you ever want to do updates prior to the window being read, you may have seen some uh, programs that have finalize as one of these things. So you have to finalize it before you can make update calls because what finalize does is it actually creates the window. It's the thing that triggers uh, or it, it goes ahead and it calls a non-blocking read in reality. Um, so it will show the window. You may, if you're going to move the window, let's say, as part of the update, I would recommend setting the alpha channel to zero um, and then moving your window and then turning it back on. Uh, so, um, and then same thing with, with messing with doing updates. Um, it's, it's after you do a finalize. You may want to turn the alpha channel off for some of those. I, I don't know. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you for watching.